Hello everyone and welcome to a special video where I'm going to be testing out uh, Batania's newest generating flower, which I believe is called the uh, Dandelion. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it, but it's got a very interesting concept to it. So this flower is based on Conway's Game of Life, which is... A very interesting little thing. I'm not quite sure if game is the right word for it, but it'd probably be better for me to show you than to tell you. <laughs> I'm not very good at explaining things, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the lexicon entry. Then I'm going to show you a setup I've done, and uh, there's one particular pattern I found that seems to pr produce a pretty good amount of mana. I'm sure there's better ones. But uh, I'm going to show what I've discovered so far. Alright, so let's dig into this entry a little bit. As it says, it's based on uh, Conway's Game of Life, and it has a board size of 25 by 25, centered around the Dandelion itself. And it requires a redstone signal to run the game, and it'll do that two ticks every second. So about every 10 ticks, it'll simulate a generation of the Game of Life. So with the Game of Life, you have a board of cells, uh, typically a square grid. Uh, I think I've seen other variations somewhere. But uh, we're obviously dealing with squares in Minecraft, so they could be either alive or dead. And every generation, they're going to potentially change their state or stay, stay the same, depending on their eight neighbors. Okay, so... As is typical with the Game of Life, if we have fewer than two neighbors or more than three live neighbors, a cell will die. If it has exactly two or three neighbors, it will continue to live. And any dead cell with three live neighbors will become a live cell. Okay, and Batania also has a few special rules involved here. So unlike the typical game of life, we have uh, ages for the cell, starting at zero and goes up to 60. So past the 60th generation, cells will die. And every generation, the age of living cells will increase, and when a new one is born, it will be the age of its oldest neighbor. So typically, if you were to place a bunch of cells on board and run the game, all these cells would have the same age, I think. Next, the 3x3 zone around the dandelion is not habitable, but any cells that would be born there will be converted to mana, and the amount depends on the age of the cells. And the 5x5 zone around the dand dandelion, excluding the 3x3 zone previously mentioned, uh, is also not habitable, but won't produce any mana. Uh, you can have cells living in that area, but it... Uh, I guess I should rephrase that, it's just not habitable by age zero cells, as it says. So, any cells that that are being newly born, they they can live in that area, but I'm going to call it the non-habitable zone. Alright, and in this last paragraph it says that you can't have two dandelions working nearby, and you can't move the cells by any other means. So no pistons pushing them around or any nonsense like that. And the cells themselves, we actually have to craft cellular blocks, which are made from cactus, carrots, and potatoes. So all stuff that we could grow very easily. And they can also be used by, as building blocks if you want. And here's the recipe for the dandelion. Looks pretty easy, aside from the Gaia spirit. So you'll have to slay a guardian of Gaia. And here's the recipe for the cellular blocks. All right, so to demonstrate this a little bit better, I've laid out a board here with some different colored bricks to show the different areas. So we can see the dandelion and its area extends to the edge of the light blue bricks here. Whoops, forgot I'm in creative mode. And I just put a darker blue border around it. The red area is the non-habitable zone where new cells, or cells of age zero, cannot exist. So I think if I were to put a cell there... Yeah, it... Well, <laughs> they're just going to die if the board's enabled. I'd better turn that off. And the green zone is where it will produce mana. So you want to get cells that are fairly old into the green zone eventually, if you can. 
and the mana pool up here is empty, so we can see how much mana different patterns produce. So, what are some things you can do with this? Well, there's quite a few well-known patterns in the game of life, and some of them are kind of worthless for this, I think. So, for example, still lifes obviously aren't going to do you much. Uh, oscillators probably aren't going to do anything for you. Uh, spaceship class things like the glider, those could be kind of useful, but I don't think they're an especially good way to produce mana. Then there's the, uh, I think they're called Methuselahs, which are small patterns that tend to evolve over a long period of time and then either stabilize or die out. In this case, they're going to die out anyway, uh, just because of the generation limit, but uh, there's still some useful ones in there. So here I've just set up something that's going to place a glider, and I'll need to go turn on the board over here. And that's just sending a redstone signal to the flower itself. And you can see a glider, it moves and retains, I think it's five cells. I guess it, this has like four, or is that just two states? I think it's just two states. But a glider will move diagonally across the board, and you can see that produced a little bit of mana when it hit the green. Not very much. Let's go ahead and replace that pool. Okay, and of course we'll need to turn off the board anytime we want to place a pattern. So let's see, I haven't tried the die hard in a while, why don't we try that one? So die hard is something like that, and you can place more than one pattern on the board if you want. In fact, I that seems to be pretty useful to do. So you can see this pattern is going to evolve a bit over time. And I don't know if this one's going to produce any mana or not. <laughs> yeah, this one's not really doing a whole lot, but some patterns can take a while to produce mana. But yeah, it looks like that one just died out without doing anything for us. Alright, so I'm going to do one more random pattern here, and then I'll show the pattern that I discovered that seems to work pretty well. So this is called Acorn. I don't know why it's called Acorn, but it is. So I'm going to make two of these, actually. I don't want to position that. Something like that, maybe. Okay, so we got two acorns. Let's go ahead and run these. That may not be enough to do anything in particular. Okay, so it's actually uh, producing a, a lot of cells, and it's producing a few mana bursts, as you can see. All right, it looks like they just died out. So let's see. All right, that actually produced a respectable amount of mana. Not bad. Let's go ahead and replace that pool once again, turn off the board. And now I'm going to place down the pattern that I found that seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to do, let's see, how did it go again? Let me actually look at the screenshot I took. Okay, so we're going to be doing our, our pentominoes, four of them, kind of close to the non-habitable zone, and we're going to do kind of a radial symmetry, I guess we'd call it. So these are, each of these patterns of five blocks is called an R pentomino. And I believe that's the pattern we want, one, one block of space in between the non-habitable zone. And let's go ahead and run this pattern. It's going to produce some pretty cool looking stuff. And then near the end of its life, it's going to produce a pretty good chunk of mana. So this does take a while to evolve. So let's see, 60 generations and 2 generations per second means that uh, this will take about 30 seconds to die out. So... It's not a terribly long period of time, but <laughs> I love the patterns this creates. It's so cool.
Okay, and that just produced a pretty good chunk of mana here. Which that actually seemed to run out a lot faster than I remember it doing. But it was late at night that I discovered this, so I don't know. Well, that seems pretty similar to what the double acorns did for us. Hmm. I don't. I don't think I made any mistake in the pattern, but okay. So I'm just trying this one more time, and of course, you don't have to lay out these blocks by hand, as I showed over there. You can have some kind of block placers to place the blocks. Um, I'm guessing I just kind of forgot about how much mana I produced before, but I'll just keep an eye on this. So this is really cool. I, I kind of want to set this up in my Let's Play world now. I'll probably get around to doing that. I don't use Batania a whole lot. <laughs> okay, there we go. Yeah, now it's... Yeah, that is a pretty good chunk of mana. It filled the flower up almost halfway. I swear it didn't do this the last time, but it must have. Okay, I guess I just wasn't really paying attention, but... Uh, this chunk of mana here was produced by 20 of these cell blocks. And remember, the recipe is four cactus, one carrot, and one potato for three of them. So about seven batches of this recipe makes this amount of mana. I think that's actually pretty good. And I'm sure there are even better patterns out there that would produce even more mana. So that's the dandelion. Uh, let me know if you can find any patterns that you think work even better, and let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm sure there are plenty of patterns I haven't tried, and there are probably some that wouldn't work so well with the generation limit. Like a Gosper glider gun probably wouldn't work that well because it, I think it takes like 15 to 30 generations to produce a single glider, so you'd only get two or three. All right, so really quickly, I, I would also like to talk about the the recent kind of controversy that's been stirred up by Batania and what I think about it. So we're done with the dandelion and if that's all you care about, bye, see you later. Thanks for watching. So I don't know how many people know this, but there was a change a while back in Batania where passive flowers by default will no longer last forever. They have a limited lifespan. I think it was like 48,000 ticks or two Minecraft days or something like that. And recently that config option has been removed and it is now 72,000 ticks or three Minecraft days and you cannot change that. And apparently that has angered quite a few people. <laughs> and personally, I'm okay with that change. I don't care that much. I mean, it's more incentive to play with cool stuff like this. And I remember the first time I discovered that, I, I was actually away from Batania for about 100 builds. Like, I stopped messing with it around for build 100 and came back around 190-something. And I encountered that change completely by random, and it confused me a bit at the time because I just happened to throw, uh, what is it, the Black Lotus into a mana pool at the exact moment that they started decaying. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But once I actually looked up and realized what that was that caused the Dayblooms to change, I was like, oh, that, that's kind of cool. Like I said before, it's more incentive to mess around with the other flowers, and I support that change. I think it's a good one. Uh, I can kind of see where, where some people are a little upset about the config being removed. Um, I mean, I do like my configurable mods. I like being able to customize them a bit to my taste, but... In this case, I think it's probably for the best that that config was removed. I think that's about all I've got to say on the issue. So, once again, thanks for watching this video. And, uh, oh, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, my Let's Play will probably continue next week. I'm going to take a, another week off, uh, still doing the job search thing. It's not going well. Alright, thanks for watching.